Farming is a matter of food security. But recent studies like this say farmland is under threat. So is it really time to listen? Many of those studies put farmland laws into the context of urbanization. But is urbanization really threatening food security in the future? Or are we overhyping this subject to the detriment of other, more pressing issues? So if we talk about urbanization, we talk about land that has been used for farming and that is transitioning into non-farming purposes such as housing. This process is called urban encroachment and that can bring serious social consequences not just for local food production, but especially if it pushes up land and house prices. But does it threaten food security? Most studies on the subject, including the one we showed earlier, predict that roughly 2% of all farmland in the US is affected. Studies suggest that also regions in Western Europe, Asia and Africa are among the world's regions that will lose more than 2% of their agricultural land due to urbanization. However, food production is also at an all-time high. There is more food produced than consumed, and the stunning 40-50% to 50 of all food produced is lost or wasted in the United States. Where at the same time every tenth person on the planet is starving. At the same time roughly 44% of the United States are in farmland currently. So with an overproduction of food and a large portion of farmland still in business, losing farmland could only be a threat if it would be at an alarming rate. So let's look at the statistics. According to the UCA, the number of farms is declining, while the average farm is getting larger. However, the number of farmland itself is only moderately, if at all, declining. This development makes a lot of sense. According to the USDA 2022 farming census, the average farm in the United States is 58 years old. Some other studies show that more than half of all farmers don't have an estate plan and more than 70% did not identify a successor. So if you talk about farms and farmland, the real threat is that farms are getting bigger, more expensive, and not many want to continue farming under those conditions. Farmland is then sold for the most part to larger investors and farms that have the capital and manpower to continue to farm. So if we can break this down a little bit more. There is the generational problem. It is very common that farmers find themselves in a situation where the next generation does not want to take over the farm. Food protection after all is hard work and is very much a lifestyle rather than just a job. But this needs to be combined with the economic reasons. Farms get bigger and larger and it's harder to sell and harder to pass on. Generally supply, labor and maintenance costs went up and that also makes farms harder to manage and harder to pass on. Last but not least, climate change. Changes to natural resources always affected farming. Water quality issues, soil erosion, disease and pests drove more than one farm into ruin. However, climate change acts like a catalyst to those problems. Rapid changes in weather patterns have made it harder to farm and farmers need to react faster to challenges than ever before in order to transition into other crops or adjust farming practices to accommodate the new reality. So now, where does urban encroachment fit in? It acts like a catalyst, but not as the cause for farmland loss. Root causes are economic, climate or generational problems that are already present. Protecting farmland will need a lot more than just to focus on urbanization. And overall, farmland loss is not a food security issue. Remember, we overproduce food and waste almost 40% of it. Also, all states already have laws and practice, right to farm laws, that protect farmers and ranchers in many ways. Additionally, farmland trusts are established in many regions from California all the way to Maryland and help protect hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland in the United States currently. So what can we do? Politically, it would be wise to focus on encouraging private farmland trust. But more importantly, fostering investment into ag innovation, bioengineering and new technology to optimize food supply chains from farm to fork. That is the key to gain better food security and to find solutions to the challenges that come with climate change. Those investments are made currently unfortunately too rarely. 
Food security in the time of man-made climate change requires complex solutions to optimize supply chains, including food production, distribution, as well as consumer education. It is crucial to focus on those investments in the future. So, all in all, the bottom line is, farmland loss is always a local tragedy, but it is not a threat to food security. We overproduce food and food is lost and wasted before and after the farm gate at staggering numbers. Food security is a matter of optimization, distribution and prevention of food loss rather than a matter of farmland loss. Secondly, development and urbanization are not the main drivers behind farmland loss. Underlying are problems such as economic despair, generational problems or climate change. To achieve food security, we will need to focus on those topics. And those will need different solutions and are often overlooked in discussions around farmland loss. I hope this video helps. Please hit the like button, subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments.